folks, welcome back to Good Enough Customs. So uh, this week, uh, this week was Power Tour, and uh, obviously I'm back home. Um, I I do have to first off apologize because I got wrapped up so much in the moment of doing stuff and having fun, <laughs> and driving and getting where we needed to go, and talking to people. I hardly ever took the camera out of my pocket. I did take it out a good, you know, a bit here and there. Um, but, uh, I, I really wish I'd gotten more film, video, whatever you want to call it throughout the entire event. I, to be honest, I, it, it, uh, it was one of those, I just, I didn't think about it. And then after we'd leave a place, I'm like, dang it, man, I didn't take a ca I didn't do anything with the freaking camera. What the heck? So, uh, uh, so I do apologize, uh, about that. So it's not quite as much footage as I would hope, but, uh, it's, it's still a fair amount. So anyways, first stop of the trip was in Memphis. That's where we started off. That's where check-in was. Um, it was, uh, it was, it was hot. It was very hot. <laughs> so, um, so what we did was, uh, you know, we're driving all our trucks or I'm driving my truck. Caden's driving his truck. Crook's driving his Camaro. We really didn't want to get a chance of getting stuck in Nashville traffic. Um, which we probably wouldn't have cause we left so early. But, uh, uh, there, then there's the other side of that is, uh, uh, interstate 840 in Nashville. I don't know if anybody's familiar with the Nashville area, but, uh, interstate 840 in Nashville has absolutely the worst bridge transitions I have ever seen in my entire life. It, it, in some spots, it feels like you're hitting a speed bump as you're going onto a bridge, or it's got about a foot dip right before you hit the bridge. And you tried doing that in a couple lower trucks um, that, I mean, Steve sitting off the ground, the lower control arms ain't two and a half, three inches off the ground. Um, you're going to break something or you're just going to, you know, bounce the hell out of yourself. We weren't about that. So 840 would have been the logical place for us to go and then hit 40 and then head out. Um, but we didn't want to deal with 840. So uh, we said, you know what, let's do this. We're going to hit the route backwards. So, uh, uh, so we looked at what the route was coming from Memphis to Nashville for Tuesday. Um, and so Monday morning we got up extra early and we drove the route backwards headed to, uh, to Memphis. It was a great drive. It was, uh, it was a really beautiful drive. Um, and, uh, we really enjoyed that. So, uh, uh, so here is, uh, the footage from Memphis. Well, good morning, folks. It's uh, a little after five, uh, Monday morning, first day of power tour. Uh, getting Steve all loaded up and ready to go for uh, for the road trip. <laughs> oh, it's gonna be uh, it's gonna be a little hot, a little miserable. <laughs> I was looking at the forecast this morning, forecasting uh, 97, 98 degrees. I think it's a million percent humidity um, all throughout the day. Heat indexes are gonna be like 105 to 110 uh at least uh today and tomorrow and uh it's it's gonna be a hot one so uh we're gonna get all our stuff finished loading up uh, we're waiting on crook and his crew to get here uh so we can roll out together but uh yeah this starts power tour all right folks we are off and on the road so uh we're actually gonna take back roads out to memphis instead of uh hopping on the interstate because you know, gas is like five bucks a gallon on those. <laughs> and these old trucks ain't made for fuel economy. So, uh, so they're gonna roll back roads. It'll probably take us uh, four and a half hours or so to get out to Memphis. Uh, five if you count our uh, stopping for lunch or breakfast or whatever meal we decide to stop for. So, uh, so yeah, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll catch you back up here in a bit. Yeah, 
Well, just got the power tour, and uh, as we're pulling through the parking lot, uh, got a big mess going on here. So, uh, yeah, a little repair coming up. Catch up in a minute. Uh, I got Caden's truck put back together or should I say Caden got his truck put back together <laughs> yeah luckily it just uh, it overheated sitting here in this slow moving traffic around the uh, uh, parking lot area so uh, the temperature just spiked and uh, just so happened as soon as he put it in park it, it popped that up a radiator hose so uh, he got that put back on there and uh, I'm glad I remembered <laughs> and decided to go ahead and bring i got the uh five gallon water cooler and i uh, was able to top him off probably took two two and a half gallons of water to top him back off so uh so he should be good for at least a little bit and uh i believe the new plan is because uh we're not sure why it overheated but uh i believe the new plan is we're going to uh uh tomorrow head back to nashville and then uh once we get back to Nashville, he's gonna park this and drive a different vehicle. <laughs> something that uh, that won't overheat. I think something with air conditioning, just to kind of give everybody a little bit of a break every once and again, because holy cow. It's like walking around in a soup. It's just, th it's just thick, 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 two C's. So uh, anyhow, I guess we'll catch back up here in a bit. All right, folks, it's, uh, my God, is it hot. Um, I think the heat index is probably like 105, something like that. But uh, we stayed in uh, we stayed in line for probably two and a half, three hours to get our uh, registration completed. And uh, most of that's standing in the sun. So pretty wiped out now. So I think uh, I, I would have loved to have gotten around and walked and looked at a bunch of cars and trucks and stuff but god almighty it is hot and i am absolutely wiped so uh pretty much day's winding down and uh, most folks are rolling out so uh i think that's just gonna wrap it up for day one didn't get to see as much as i wanted didn't get to i was kind of hoping to do the autocross but uh it's just so damn hot <laughs> So, so uh, I guess that's going to wrap it up for us. I'm going to uh, head back to the truck here in a second. And uh, I think we're going to roll out because it's just, it's just miserable. So we'll, uh, we'll catch up with y'all tomorrow. All right, folks. So, uh, we got done at uh, the, the power tour stop here in Memphis for the day and uh, decided to wait for traffic to empty out and went to get us some food. Where do we eat at? Belly Acres. <laughs> it's good. <laughs> it's, uh, it's real good. 
So I highly recommend if you're in a Memphis area. But uh, uh, Fat Man approved. So uh, so anyways, we're sitting there chit-chatting and talking. And it's like, you know, tomorrow's going to be hotter than it was today. And Caden's truck decided it wanted to start overheating again on the mile drive to, uh, to the restaurant. So uh, we did the next logical thing and said, you know what? Screw it. Let's just drive on home tonight. So we're going to cruise back to Nashville tonight. And uh, in order to battle the uh, overheating, we're going Cletus style, taking the hood off and uh, going to let this guy have all the airflow. So, uh, so that's kind of where we're at now. So I guess uh, hopefully nothing happens on the interstate on the way home because we're just going to ride the interstate back. And uh, as long as nothing happens, uh, we'll see you all tomorrow. If something else happens, I'll, uh, I'll chime back in. So uh, y'all take it easy. We'll see you here in a bit. So quick stop for gas and uh, told y'all I was going to do something about this beard getting up in my face. So grabbed a zip tie, zip tied it up, clipped the end off of it. Yeah, we're good. I ought to keep the, uh, I ought to keep this damn beard from riding up in my face. So uh, <laughs> good times. All right. So uh, leaving Memphis, that was, uh, there was a little bit of a challenge there. Um, you know, as we just saw, Caden's truck um, decided to pop that up a radiator hose. Don't know exactly what's going on with it, but that thing, it just, it, it won't stop overheating. So, uh, uh, so we did pop the hood off of it, threw it in the bed of the truck and hauled ass back to Nashville, uh, at night because, Hey, the sun's down, it's cooler. We were able to drive the entire way back. Uh, I don't think his truck got over 178, 180 degrees, uh, the entire way back, but that's running with the hood off, uh, running at night where it was, it wasn't. It was still humid, but it wasn't like, you know, it wasn't cool out. Um, but you didn't have the sun beating down on you. So, you know, it was probably in the 80s, running down the interstate with the hood off, and it was able to breathe and get some of that heat off the motor. So uh, the truck made it all the way back to their house where they parked it. And uh, uh, so that brings us into the Nashville portion of the trip. So, uh, uh, so unfortunately, we didn't get to do, you know, the big ride with everybody um coming back on the route back to nashville uh, mainly because you know like i said caden's truck just it just would not stop overheating so uh so i him to do that night it's actually funny we saw a lot of power tour folks driving on the interstate back at night um now i'm not gonna lie it's expensive especially when gas is 455 dollars a gallon <laughs> it, whew, yeah it uh I had budgeted for around 100 to 150 a day on fuel, and uh, uh, I, I I figured Steve would be getting worst case 12, 13 miles a gallon, probably closer to 14, 15 miles a gallon, um, and it did. It varied between the two. It sometimes 12, 13, sometimes you know 14, 15. It really depended on what we were doing and where we were driving. But uh, that uh, that Memphis day, I think I spent 250 dollars. <laughs> <laughs> so whew, that, that one hurt but then i looked at it this way i was like well wait a minute I, I, that's basically two days of driving now so two days of driving done in one day um so anyways we got back home uh everybody got some sleep got to sleep in our own beds that's awesome uh but it was a short night because we didn't get back home till 12 30 i think i climbed in bed about two o'clock um then we got back up we slept in a little bit. We got up. We headed over to the Nashville Super Speedway, and uh, uh, we got there, and it, it too was hot. I mean, I'm not gonna lie. It was just. I mean, that's that's the that's the name of this week. It was just hot. Uh, literally, feel like you're melting. It was just. It was miserable and, and, at times. So, uh, so we get to the Nashville Super Speedway, and uh, uh, again, hot. Um, start having to deal with, there's a lot of folks running into, uh, uh, keeping their cars cool, keeping their trucks cool. Um, actually at the speedway had a hard time keeping your person cool. Cause it was just, it was boiling out there. So, uh, so here's, uh, the Nashville super speedway footage that I got. All righty folks. So day two power tour. I think I'm in neutral still. So day two of power tour and uh, we just got to the uh, Nashville super speedway and uh, there's quite a line. Um, 
We got here about 11.30 or so. We ended up driving all the way back to Nashville last night, uh, taking the interstate, just so we could uh, get Caden's truck home because it was overheating. You know, it overheated in the mile it took us to go from uh, the Liberty Park to the restaurant we were going to, uh, Bailey Acres. Fantastic place. The burgers are amazing. But uh, anyways, uh, so yeah, so we took our time this morning, drove the interstate back last night, took our time this morning. Um, don't worry, we kind of did the route. We just did it backwards because we went the route over to Memphis. Um, kind of rode the route backwards because we didn't want to deal with the interstate traffic during the day. So, uh, so anyway, so now we're sitting here uh, on the uh, outside ring road for the uh, for the Super Speedway over here and uh, pretty good line of cars and of course you know it's like almost 100 freaking degrees outside it's hotter than hell and I have never had a problem with uh, Steve overheating but uh, this is definitely Sorry. this is definitely testing uh, Steve's cooling ability so uh, so you know my current view right now is uh, I'm driving the truck Ace Ventura style because uh, I said I just glanced down after we've been sitting here for a few minutes. I glanced down and looked and I was like, huh. It's like Steve's <laughs> Steve's never been up to, you know, 195 before. And uh, and then I was like, well, Steve's never been to 200 before. Jim never has a second cup of coffee at home. <laughs> Steve's never been to 205 before. I was like, okay, I got to pop the hood. So pop the hood, sitting here uh, idling along where we need to, and then kicking it in neutral and coasting, uh, take the load off the motor. And uh, we have now settled back to 200 degrees. So a uh, little bit better now, I'm, uh, I'm glad to say. So uh, it's getting a little tricky because now we're shifting lanes and moving around. Hey, son, yeah. kind of keep an eye out that door so I don't, if somebody's on that side, I don't hit them. <laughs> I don't want to do that. I can only see so much doing the Ace Ventura thing. So, uh, so anyway, so uh, we're on our way in, and uh, I guess I'll check back in. Yeah, like I said, it's already down to two. It's actually under 200 now, so, uh, uh, so Steve's doing just fine. And uh, I guess it's a good thing we didn't bring Kate's truck out here because it would not have made it through that thing would overheat it so fast but anyways uh so we're headed uh headed into the uh, super speedway to get set up and ready so uh we'll catch up with you there here on the uh, main thoroughfare area just checking out some of the stuff as we go to get checked in
car sure looks funny. <laughs> Dad jokes. One of the few shaded spots here, so uh, we're gonna duck in here for a few minutes and just kind of cool off and you know check out these cars. This looks so much better in person oh, yeah? than it does on, on the screen. I know. Like, I... It... So, uh, went around, saw all the really cool stuff on the Midway, got on my, got on my free, uh, long hauler swag, swag. So, uh, now, uh, I'm gonna come over here and, uh, dip my toes into the, uh, the, the nice side of the pool and, uh, we're actually gonna do a quick little stroll around, uh, the Platinum Club. I just... I don't really see spending that kind of money on it. I mean, hey, hats off to if you got the money to spend to do the uh, Platinum Club thing for Power Tour. I mean, you get your own little place. They got the uh, at this media center for the the Platinum Club folks. I guess while I'm holding the camera over here, should I hold my pinky out? How does that work? <laughs> so. Um, so anyways, these are the Platinum Club cars. Just gonna do a quick walkthrough just in case there's something cool. And there's something that I like, I'm gonna stop and show it, you know, show it off a little bit. So, uh, and then maybe we'll run down to the, uh, to the Gold Club, you know, the lesser vans <laughs> and check their stuff out. So, uh, uh, so anyways, here comes some of the Platinum stuff. slumming down here in the gold level <laughs> so, oh lord so we're gonna go check out some of these gold level cars and uh i guess i should say the folks that were that paid for the gold level membership whatever that gold thing is so uh we're gonna check some of these out and uh and i'm gonna go find some shade because damn it it's hot out here
right, folks, that, uh, that's going to wrap it up for me on this one. Uh, <laughs> out here on this asphalt, there is just no relief. So I'm going to go try and find a little hole to hide in, try to get some shade, and basically damn near drown myself with some water. So uh, we'll, uh, we'll catch up with y'all later. Uh, probably tonight we've got a uh, C-10 club. Tennessee we're having a little cruise in just up the road here so uh, I'll probably bring my camera along and uh, we'll catch up with y'all there all right folks so it's the end of the day we're out here in Lebanon at the uh, Snow White drive-in uh, pretty cool little place old school pull up flash of lights they'll come out and take your order in your car then they'll bring your food back out to they got a little dining area inside they got a little cruise in area over here um, Probably one of the best milkshakes I've had in a minute. It was <laughs> delicious. So I just had a little C10 club get together, um, you know, after the day ended at uh, uh, Power Tour at the Nashville Super Speedway. So just going, I've, I've been hanging out, chatting with a bunch of folks. I don't get to see, pretty much the only time I get to see them is at, you know, little C10 <laughs> gatherings. So, uh, uh, so I'm just gonna walk through real quick and just show off a few of the uh, trucks and cars. There's a few cars here. Um, just kind of show off a couple things and uh, we'll catch back up here in a minute. Day three, uh, we get up, uh, meet up with Crook, and uh, we decide we're gonna ride the route on day three. So we were trying to get out a little bit earlier so we could get a little bit ahead of the big pack, you know, maybe ride with some smaller groups, um, but ended up that we were right in the middle of it. Um, maybe even a little bit towards the back of the big pack. And I will say the trip from Nashville to Hoover, yeah, I think we were on the road like seven, eight hours maybe even a little bit more. It was a long time. Um, if we took the interstate down, it'd, be, it'd probably be like a four hour drive, but uh, it, it was a long, long drive. Uh, and it's mainly because, you know, you're hitting all these little small towns, you're hitting a bunch of red lights, um, you know, you're having to stop for gas, you're doing, uh, it, there's a lot of stopping and going. Um, but one thing I will say is it is a beautiful drive. Uh, whenever, especially whenever you're curving on, you know, cruising on some of these back roads that have a lot of curves and dips and, uh, hills. And I mean, it's, it's just some of the scenery on the, on the, on the back road drive, freaking glorious. Um, some of the roads were amazing. Uh, like there's, there's one here in, in, uh, my neck of the woods. It's just a little bit South of me, uh, down in, uh, I think it was down in Fayetteville area. Um, that was part of the tour and I. I've been on that road in other places. I've never been on that part of it. And I'm just like, 
I'm going to find any excuse I can to go run this road again. Um, just because it was, God, it was a lot of fun. And I'm not talking about hauling ass and carving the curves. I'm talking about just, just rolling, easy rolling through it, just speed limit roll. And it was just, I mean, it was so much fun to drive that little section of road. <laughs> Sitting there cruising, just had a big old stupid smile on my face the whole time. It was awesome. But, uh, but anyway, so we get in uh, day three down into Hoover and, uh, Hoover, uh, we got there late in the day. I, th I can't remember exactly what time we got there. I want to say it was like four, uh, somewhere around four. Um, and it was, uh, again, boiling hot, you know, nearly no wind. Uh, we walk around, do all our stuff. You know, we did not stay very, very long. So I did get the GoPro out, walked around for just a short period, basically to and from, uh, the check-in area. Uh, it was just, you know, being on the road that long, being in the heat all day, guys, I was just, I was wiped out. I mean, <laughs> just done. So, uh, we did not stick around super long. Uh, Crook ended up having a buddy of his, uh, that he was doing some, uh, tuning on, uh, his sniper kit. Um, he was there and needed some tuning help. So, uh, he was working on that and, uh. So I will say one thing about uh, Hoover. That's uh, that's where I actually ran into uh, uh, the guys over at Lucor Automotive. Um, uh, they have their U YouTube channel. Um, super cool guys. I'd check them out. I, I actually spent part of the day yesterday while I was uh, convalescing. <laughs> uh, spent some of the day yesterday watching some of their content. They have really good stuff out there. Um, and both the uh, you know those guys they're they're super cool guys super good uh, uh got to hang out for just a little bit with those guys uh junkyard digs was there thunderhead 289 was there um uh, flying sparks garage was there but, uh sitting there you know hanging out chit chatting with you know some of the guys there and uh you know just kind of being around them listening to them cut up and you know kind of give each other crap and just you know kind of like friends do and uh uh just just a good group of folks so uh uh, had a lot of fun with those guys just kind of hanging out over there for a few minutes while Crook was doing his tuning um, just across the parking lot from us. So, uh, so anyways, uh, here goes our uh, here goes what footage I have from Hoover. All right, folks. So uh, start of day three on the Hot Rod Power Tour 2022. Got up this morning, checked all the fluids, doing just fine. You know, training fluid is. Uh, Nice and burnt, but you know, it still pulls fine ish. <laughs> so, uh, all the fluids look good. Um, ended up putting a little bit more timing into it. Uh, truck was getting a little bit hard to start, so uh, uh, at least when it was warm, it was getting really hard to get it to fire off. So, put another degree or two of timing back in it. Um, if I keep hearing pinging, I'll just run a little higher octane gas. That should be fine. Um, I think what my real problem is here is I'm running a little too hot of a plug, so uh, probably need to back that back down. But, uh, you know, like I said, worst case for right now, just running higher octane fuel. That'll hurt at the pump, but, you know, we'll get it done. Um, so right now we're headed over to Crook's house to meet up with them, and then uh, we're going to go jump and uh, fall somewhere in line on the tour. They're, uh, they're, they left like an hour ago from Lebanon. And, I live about an hour away from there, so uh, uh, so we should be meeting up with them somewhere here, just a few, on uh, I think Highway 431 in uh, Middle Tennessee. So, uh, anyways, I'll uh, I'll catch back up with y'all. I guess as we're going down the road. For the first time ever, Steve has let me down. I believe where I mounted the uh, new fuel pump 
might be a might be a touch too close to the exhaust i was kind of afraid of that so i think it may have heated that pump up enough where it's just kind of vapor locked itself or uh possibly burned the pump up it is still turning on but i'm not getting any fuel up here in the bowls so uh uh we just got done running up a really pretty good grade on a hill and uh uh, temperature on the truck went up to you know 190 almost 195 so uh, uh, it was huffing getting up that hill so it may be that uh, that fuel pumps just a little too close to uh, to the exhaust so let her cool down once it cools down I'll uh, we'll go find a parts house somewhere and maybe buy some exhaust wrap and just wrap the exhaust right there you know a little before and a little after the fuel pump and maybe Maybe even get a little piece of metal or something and bend up and just angle it to where it can pull some fresh air in and try to cool that pump off. So, uh, so yep, right now we're just sitting here on the side of the road right next to the uh, Mountain Breeze RV park. Steve just kind of chilling out. So we'll check back here in a bit. So quick roadside repair, not really a repair, more of a Band-Aid. Uh, I didn't have any bottles of water on me. All we had is this uh, five gallon thing, which tipped over one of our guests at one time and spilled everywhere. But Crook had some water bottles. So I took a water bottle, put a little hole in the tip, did like that up underneath and uh, sprayed the uh, water pump down with some good cold water, sprayed the exhaust around it down and uh, just had Jackson turn the key on and uh, we now have a bowl full of fuel if you can see that so uh, I'm gonna get on the road go find a parts house somewhere and pick up some exhaust wrap and I'm just gonna wrap that exhaust right there where the uh, where the fuel pump lives so uh, hopefully we don't have to do this again but we'll see So, uh, finally made it to Hoover. <laughs> Traffic was a nightmare. Uh, and then Steve overheated again. But uh, not bad, like 210, nothing big. So, uh, walk up and uh, see this thing sitting here, little Mons, 1970. And I guess this is... Uh, Look for a racing. I'm gonna have to check him out. But uh, yeah, so that's the same color, exterior and interior, as my Tempest. So I don't know the trim level difference between a Le Mans and a Tempest. I'm sure that's all it is. So uh, we've also got uh, the vice grip truck sitting right here, and. Uh, it's everything you would expect. It's cool. Looks like I uh, got another vice grip truck sitting over here. That's right. I remember seeing something about he let somebody drive his blue one, his long bed. I really like this truck. I actually want one of these really bad. eBay Motors has parts 
for new cars, new part for old cars, and new part yeah, for Yeah, I like this. Yeah, today was kind of a bust. Didn't get to, I mean, we got here like 10 after five. Show closed down at six. Everybody's packing up and heading out. So there's not a whole lot to look at out here today. <sighs> but I mean, you know, it was a pretty drive, you know, when we we're able to keep moving. It was the uh, stop and go traffic that was kind of killing us. But, uh, um, but other than, uh, vapor locking up my fuel pump and uh overheating in birmingham rush hour traffic pretty good ride so i'm gonna head back to the truck and get some water because i'm about to fall over and uh i think we're gonna go find our airbnb and cool off so uh maybe i'll uh maybe i'll jump back on here a little bit later maybe not i don't know um worst case i'll talk to y'all tomorrow so we're getting ready we're pulling out of uh day two three whatever day this is pulling out of hoover alabama and uh, of course you know end of the day we're waiting for it to cool off and traffic to die down a little bit we got that rolling in and i mean you can see this thing is kicking wind it's kicking it bad so that white that white pop-up I don't think I've seen Jackson move quite that fast ever, but uh, yeah, that thing literally slammed into the side of the freaking truck. So, luckily, that's my only damage. Couple little scuffs, but Steve's a good boy. It also knocked my mirror out of alignment, so now I gotta deal with that. So, anyways, moving on. Hopefully, nothing else blows over in front of me. So we'll catch up later. That's gonna wrap it up for today folks uh hoover alabama the uh the trip down was uh long and uh a little bit tedious <laughs> so vapor lock you know vapor lock the uh, fuel pump on steve got that cooled off got it rocking and rolling again um ran into god awful traffic in birmingham um steve didn't overheat but it got it to like 210 ish so uh, i had to stop cool it off uh again just the water bottle hole in the end of it and just sat there and sprayed cold water on the radiator for a few minutes with the hood up with the motor off and uh i think it took about 10 minutes or so and it cooled right down um and then i was able to deal with you know stop and go traffic after that just fine didn't have another problem uh leaving the show of course <sighs> huge gust of wind picked up that tent i don't know what size that thing is 12 by 12 something like that and that thing it picked it up like it was nothing and slung it right into the side of steve so got a few extra chips on steve's door uh went through and checked a little bit closer uh it actually gave me like five or six chips um those two that i, I think i showed on camera and then there's a little line of more i didn't realize until we got to the uh to the restaurant we were eating at so um no other damage that i could see you know it didn't look like it dented anything but uh, i'm still gonna probably tomorrow stop and talk to uh i think it came from the ebay booth i'm pretty sure it did uh they're the uh the title sponsor for uh hot rod power tour this year so i'm gonna talk to those guys and just see you know not that i'm looking for any compensation for it or anything like that i'm not it's just it's one of those that um the guys that were doing the tents you know we helped them drag their tent that hit my truck drug it back over and they didn't even act like they needed to be concerned about anything you know that thing probably came a couple inches away from jackson's face because it came in the window uh now the window was down but it came in the window and if he hadn't reacted like he did he would have caught that thing right in the jaw and uh 
probably would have changed the, the way our trip was going drastically. But uh, anyways, moving on from that. Um, so, I mean, pretty decent day, I guess. I mean, you know, we spent roughly nine hours on the road. Had a couple, you know, issues. But uh, nothing too major. So, uh, we are now at this little Airbnb that we got. And uh, it's freaking awesome. I saw the pictures of it online. I was like, yeah, that needs to happen. So, uh, we're staying in a place called The Barn. Uh, down in Montevello, Alabama. Um, you know, it's, uh, what is it? Sleeps, I think technically you could sleep two, four, five. You could probably sleep seven or eight people here. Um, as long as you don't mind sharing a bed. But, uh, I mean, look at this place. It is just cool. So, living room, there's a little futon thing fold out. That's where I'll be crashing tonight bathroom over there we've got another bedroom we've got another bedroom right back over here uh then there's a loft that goes up and uh it goes up and there's two beds up there and uh it's uh it's a really cool place i'm pretty tickled with it so uh anyways i'll uh, i'll pull pictures of it in the morning because it's 10 30 9 30 I don't even know what time it is. I think it's 9.30 or 10 o'clock. Um, I'll get some pictures of it in the morning and uh, or film a little bit of it in the morning so y'all guys can uh, see what this place looks like from the outside. It's pretty awesome. So uh, anyways, that'll do it for tonight. I will see y'all tomorrow. So now we're in a day four hot rod power tour. Uh, day four was Hoover to Pensacola. Um, now we're going to start day four off a little bit rougher than we had been doing everything. So apparently, uh, from our dinner, um, part of it was not cooked well enough and Jackson ended up with some food poisoning. So he was up all night long, um, with it coming from both ends folks. I mean, it was bad. He was yakking and pooping and just, he couldn't stop. Um, so he had a really rough night, which in turn, man, I had a really rough night, <laughs> but I at least got some sleep. He spent most of the night on the toilet. Um, it was rough. So anyway, so we get up uh, and we start to head out. And of course, you know, he's having problems. Needing to go to the bathroom, needing to do this. So uh, we ended up finding a pharmacy so we could get some Imodium AD. Um, I'm trying to get him some uh, uh, Pedialyte and other things to try to keep him hydrated because he's probably already a little dehydrated and it's 100 degrees out, and we're driving in a truck with no air conditioning. So uh, uh, ended up, after a little while, I ended up t just hollering at Crook um, and basically getting Jackson to ride with uh, Caden and Mark, uh, you know, Crook's son, Crook's dad. Um, let him, let Jackson ride with them guys because it was just, he needed some sleep. He needed to be at least somewhat comfortable. He needed to be in the air conditioning. Um, and since I had the Yukon, that's where he went. And that's, that's where he spent pretty much the entire day on uh, Thursday. But anyways, by the time we got down to uh, Pensacola, we ended up, uh, uh, it was later in the day. It was, you know, 4.30-ish. Um, we walked around, checked out some of the stuff. I honestly don't remember if I had any footage. If I do, it'll be following this directly. But uh, um, it was... Uh, uh, that the, the week had really started wearing in on us. So, uh, uh, everybody was exhausted. Everybody was hot. We just wanted to go to our little Airbnb, get into some air conditioning and just go to bed. <laughs> so, uh, so I think we were at the Pensacola location, all of maybe a half hour, 45 minutes. And then we turned around, headed right out, went straight over to our Airbnb and uh cranked the ac way down and uh went and grabbed us some dinner and then came back and everybody got showers and went to bed and i think everybody was in bed at like well everybody was at least asleep by nine o'clock most everybody had already uh kind of passed out off and on throughout the night just everybody was everybody was just exhausted so thursday was kind of our everybody everybody's dead tired day and uh so i apologize there really wasn't much footage on thursday so uh but here is the footage that I did get. All right, folks, start of day four. Headed to Pensacola, Florida, and uh, fixing to roll out. It's not quite as early as we wanted to leave, but, you know, it's early enough. So, uh, 
Now I told you I'd show you a quick shot of the uh, of the barns. It's pretty awesome. But uh, yeah, that's where we stayed. It's pretty cool. So uh, we're gonna go fuel up and uh, get some ice and whatnot and get on the road. So we'll catch up later. Just parked here at uh, Pensacola, I guess the uh, Pensacola Fairground, something or other. So just parked, we're walking over to get our ticket punched. And uh, pretty uneventful ride. It's just hot, you know, like all the days have been so far. Um, I think the only thing that really happened was we had a, uh, we had a guy at a gas station needed to jump and I helped jump him off. That was pretty much it. So, pretty good day so far. Just kind of cruising along. So, uh, we'll check back in a little bit. Oh, now this is cool. This has got that little 2.8 motor in it. Hill wagon with the uh, like a TJ front end on it. It's cut down. That is slick. I don't know how many of y'all grew up in the 80s and the 90s even, I guess. But uh, first thought whenever I saw this car was license to drive. Now granted, license to drive, it was a two-door. But uh, <laughs> look at that thing. Uh -huh. Kind of expect a drunk Heather Graham to pop up out of the back seat. Hello.
Alrighty, so last day of power tour, uh, day five. Day five is the long day. That's that's probably the hardest drive and the longest time that you would spend on the road uh, was going to be day five. And that was leaving Pensacola, Florida and headed to Atlanta Motor Speedway. Um, it was a little over 300 miles, if I remember correctly. Uh, if you took the route, it was almost six and a half hours. Um, and that's not including traffic or stops for fuel or anything else. So six and a half hour drive. It was still hotter than crap outside. Um, it, it was one of those that we were like, we don't even want to try to do the route. You know, I was just like, that's, that's, that's just way too long, man. I can't, I can't do that. Um, so we decided to go the interstate, which would only take us five hours, 15 minutes, five and a half hours, somewhere in that neighborhood. Now that decision wasn't just strictly, you know, that it wasn't just like, well, that's going to save us time. Let's go. I knew taking the interstate, we're going to be running 75, 80 mile an hour most of the time to where Steve's going to get really thirsty. Steve's going to be drinking a lot of gas. So I'll probably be looking at like 10, 11, 12 miles a gallon. Um, but we were so tired. I did not want to be in the truck for six hours. Uh, plus, we still were going to be driving home from Atlanta, which is a four and a half hour drive. So we were looking at a 10 or 11 hour day just being on the road. So we said, you know, all right, we're just going to roll the interstate and uh, uh, we're just going to cook it and just get it done. So uh, we ended up deciding that uh, for once we're going to get up early. And uh, like I said, on Thursday, everybody went to bed super early Thursday night. I think everybody was, everybody was probably at least in bed slash asleep by like 9, 9.30. I mean... I usually, during my normal work week and life, I usually go to bed till 11, 12 o'clock, and I'm up around 6. But uh, uh, I think Crook goes to bed at like 1, you know, 12, 1 o'clock in the morning, and he's up at like 4, 35 o'clock every day. So uh, uh, for everybody to be so tired that we said, screw it, we're going to bed now, we were beat. So, uh, so anyhow, so we got up uh, super early on... Uh, Friday morning. We got up, uh, I think my alarm went off at a quarter after four. Um, I was up and pretty well ready to go at a quarter till five. Uh, of course, you know, trying to get everybody, you know, get the boys, especially teenagers. Am I right? <laughs> so trying to get the guys, the, the boys up and running. Um, that was a little bit more difficult, but then we had to pack everything up. So, so we ended up leaving the hotel at like five, five thirty, something like that. And, uh, we're like, all right, we're going to hightail it down the road. We're going to hit the interstate. You know, we went ahead and topped off with fuel. We're going to hit the interstate and uh, we're going to drive a couple hours. We'll stop and get some breakfast and then, you know, just, you know, cannonball it as much as we can straight to Atlanta. And uh, so it, it was a good, good plan. But, uh, you know, plans don't always work out. <laughs> so, um, so you'll see right here in the footage uh, that I'm about to show uh how my day on day five went well, all right folks so uh final day of power tour we uh we're leaving uh pensacola headed to atlanta yeah don't mind the uh little bigger thing here i, I tell you the, the wind coming through the back glass is supposed to just say like, it just rides right up in my face and drives me nuts so uh anyways moving on
Well, it's only been about 10 minutes since I did the quick little update. And uh, we're cruising down uh, the highway here and I start hearing a chirp and this thing about pulls me right off the freaking road, hard to the right. And uh, I've either got brake caliper stuck or I've got a wheel bearing going out. So uh, um, I'm thinking it's the wheel bearing because that wheel is, yeah, that's gonna be a wheel bearing. So I got wheel bearing season up on me. Um, she's making a lot of noise. So uh, we limped it over here on the shoulder of the road and uh, waiting on Crook and them to Waiting on Crook and them to get back around. There they went just now. So uh, we'll start monkeying with this. God, I'm glad I did it this morning and not in the middle of the day. So uh, see if we can't find a parts house. There won't be one open for a couple hours probably. But uh, we'll, uh, we'll see what we can't do. Check in here in a bit. So when I pulled the wheel off or pulled the center cap from the wheel off, the uh, cap fell out right out. I don't really want to touch. Okay, it's cooled off. Yeah, this is just sitting in the center cap. So uh, anyways, I got a trash wheel bearing. So uh, we got to go ahead and get all this done. Unfortunately, the closest part house is about 11 miles away. But fortunately, I have traveling buddies. So, had. yeah, I had traveling buddies. <laughs> Look at that, that thing. All those things are just chewed all to pieces. The uh, Barons have left the chat. They are destroyed.
Okay, so now we can see all of the carnage here. It, uh, that inner race is uh, pretty much seized <laughs> to the spindle. So unfortunately, this thing has destroyed my hub. You can see all the ridges where that race basically was just spinning in here, chewing this hub up. So looks like I got to get a new hub. But I'm not sure if I'm just going to band-aid this guy together for now just to get it on and off the road or uh, if I'm going to run up to Napa or AutoZone, there's a couple of them up the way here uh, about 10-15 miles up the road see if one of those guys has a hub um, and then I could just you know transfer everything to it so I don't know I'm going to keep cleaning this guy up and see what I can't do with it That thing is so bad on this end. This yes, it is. is. Oh, it's just oh, it's so bad. It's gonna take a steady hand and a, uh, a good grinder to yeah. get it down. Yeah. I mean, I've done it before on big trucks and pickups. Yeah, that's just, wow. I'm just looking at this going, this is not gonna end well. Well, it'll so, get you home, but it ain't gonna- It's gonna get me eight hours on. I know. <laughs> that's the question.
paper still in Florida. So I'm gonna park Steve at his house, lock it up tight, and then uh, we're gonna haul ass to Atlanta so I don't uh, screw it up for Crook and uh, his dad and his son. So, uh, and then I guess tomorrow I'll uh, rent a trailer and come back down to Pensacola. So, uh, it's gonna be a long weekend. So, uh, so that's what we're doing right now, and uh, I'll catch back up here in just a bit. So, day five. <laughs> Whew. That was an exhausting day. Um, uh, thank, thanks to Joe Reader. I mean, that guy, freaking awesome man right there. Uh, just, I, he, he pulled up and he was just like, man, it's the third time I've passed you. I figured I'd check and see if y'all guys need some help. And I was just like, well, he goes, you need some tools. And I said, yeah, you got a grinder. And he's like, yeah, what, what tools do you need? I was like, well, a grinder, a cutoff wheel. I was like, you got that? And he's just like, I asked you what tools you need. <laughs> so he was just, you know, I, I was like, well, I could use this, 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 or this. And he was just like, I'll be right back. And he took off and he came back just a little while later. And man, he had tools. He was like, well, here's this, here's this. Here. And I'm just like, uh, this dude is killer, man. This guy is awesome. So, uh, uh, so Joe, I mean, I can't, can't thank you enough. You, uh, you came in, uh, came in, you know, really saved the day. So, uh, so anyways, I've got, uh, Steve is still in Pensacola area, actually McDavid, Florida. Um, so, <laughs> so this coming up Friday, I'm renting a trailer and I'm hauling ass back down there, uh, to go pick up Steve and trailer him back. The, uh, the, the sad fact of it is, is that uh that inner race had welded itself to the spindle um and trying to get that thing cut off of there just to be able to limp that thing anywhere uh i ended up having to take the grinder and grind that all the metal from the inner race off of the spindle and of course you know it looks like uh it, it just looked like hammered dog crap i mean it really did i you know I've got, I've got a buddy of mine that can sit there and work a grinder. And I mean, he could probably get it within a few thousands, you know, if he just takes his time and does it. Um, I am not that kind of person. <laughs> that thing, I, literally it did. It looked like hammered dog crap. It was horrible. So, uh, but I was able to get, get the wheel or get the hub and everything back on there, get it all done and limped it over to, uh, to Joe's house and, uh, got it parked over there. And, uh, he's super cool. And I uh, talked to him just the other day, uh, just yesterday, um, and told him I was going to be down there, you know, Friday, uh, I'll probably come down Friday, get there Saturday, um, or maybe leave out Saturday, get there Sunday. Not sure yet, but, uh, uh I'll have that hammered out sometime this week. But, uh, yeah, so Steve did not complete power tour. Uh, unfortunately, Steve ended up, like I said, sitting in a guy's yard down in, uh, uh, McDavid, McDavid, Florida. So, uh, then came the real pain in the butt. We spent the better part of six hours trying to get Steve sorted out. Cause we basically, Steve fell apart right there in the middle of nowhere. Uh, the closest parts house was like 12 or 13 miles up the road. Um, and it was just a little Napa. I think there was a, uh, an advance just a little ways up the road from there. But, uh, yeah, that was the closest auto parts house was 12 or 13 miles up the road. Um, and then once we got everything tore down and was sitting there looking at, I was like, dude, I, I've got to have a cutoff wheel. There's no way I'm getting this off. It is welded to this spindle. And, uh, so I was like, all right, we need a cutoff wheel. You know, we were hoping maybe a power tour guy or gal would stop and maybe they would have a grinder. Um, but that never happened. So, uh, so me and Crook hot footed it back 30 miles. <laughs> <sighs> we hot footed it back 30 miles to the Home Depot back in Pensacola and, uh, went and picked up. I, I bought, I had bought a, uh, I had bought a, uh, uh, a little rigid, uh, you know, battery operated angle grinder actually to help him out on a, uh, uh, his trailer broke. And, uh, I was having to cut out part of the, uh, the fender off of it. Um, 
And so I needed a battery operated, you know, cutoff wheel. And so I picked up this little rigid unit and it was good. It, it works out great. Um, so I picked that up and I was like, you know what? Screw it. Let's just go to Home Depot and buy another one. Why not? So we haul ass back over to Home Depot, um, which was, like I said, 30 miles. Uh, that was the closest one. Um, picked up the uh, the cutoff wheel. Picked up a couple other little tools that I might might you know may or may not need, and then hauled ass all the way back. So you know it took us about an hour to run in Pensacola and back. Uh, we get back and Crooks unboxing everything. <laughs> if you're ever in a pinch and you need to go buy a power tool, battery operated. Make sure it comes with a damn battery. <laughs> oh my God. Um, yeah. It didn't come with a battery. So we had cutoff oil, but no freaking way to run it. Uh, and so then it was just like, I, we were so put out at this point. I mean, just flat aggravated. Um, the amount of swearing that was going on was uh, impressive. So I figured I'd try to at least get some stuff done while he's off running to go get a battery because he's going to be gone for at least an hour. Um, so while he was gone to go get a battery, that's whenever Joe pulled up and, uh, uh, you know, be like Joe, be a good Samaritan. Um, if you see somebody broke down on the shoulder and you've passed them two or three times and they ain't moved a lick, <laughs> stop and see if they need a little hand. Um, you know, it was, uh, God, it sucks so bad. Um, so anyways, so once Joe got there and did all that, I was already cutting and doing by the time Crook finally got back. And uh, then it was just like, well, surprise, we don't need any of this stuff now. But uh, uh, also had Crook, I'd, I'd gotten on advanced uh, auto parts uh, and bought a, uh, a new hub because the, in, the outer race had actually spun inside the hub and just boogered it all to hell. But then once I realized that the spindle was shot, I was just like, well, there's no point in putting a new hub and new everything. No, I'm not doing all this. So anyways, got the truck put together, limped it back over to Joe's house, uh, parked it there. And then it was just like, okay, Atlanta Motor Speedway. They have it open from noon to six Atlanta time. That was Eastern time. We were currently in central time. Um, the drive to Atlanta was five hours and 15 minutes from Joe's house. And that's no traffic, no gas stops, no nothing. That's straight hauling ass to Atlanta, five hours, 15 minutes. And we lose an hour. And we're leaving Joe's house at 1230 Central Time. So we're like, okay, we got to stop and get gas. That's a must. Because we're, you know, the, uh, because we're about out. I was like, if we do some low altitude flying, we might could get there just before six o'clock. So we stopped, we filled up, uh, grabbed some quick snacks at the gas station, and uh, we hit the interstate, and man, we hit it hard. Um, you know, not saying that we were speeding, but there may be a little bit of uh, tiptoeing on the edge of what was legal. Probably not legal, probably more reckless driving. <laughs> let's just say triple digits were touched a few times so uh we were hauling ass trying to get to, to to atlanta to at least get checked in plus i mean i've never been to atlanta motor speedway i figured it'd be pretty dang cool um so we were flying until we got just outside of atlanta uh i don't know we were 30 or 40 miles out of atlanta and just freaking deadlock stop traffic what in the hell is going on here Ended up that there was uh, there was two wrecks that had happened just a little ways up in front of us, and we sat in about a half hour worth of uh, just mostly stopped traffic. Um, it barely creeped a little bit. <sighs> so I looked down. I'm like, this has just totally got us hosed, man. We're not going to make it there till six fifteen, six twenty. Um, so we were just you know we, we were. We were not very happy. We were not too excited. I've actually got, you know, the, the, I'm driving the, the Yukon and, uh, most everybody in there is sleeping. Yeah. <laughs> I guess everybody's just freaking beat. Um, 
so we're, we, you know, like I said, we, we're sitting in this traffic. I keep looking back and Crook's like way back because Camaro's wanting to overheat. Uh, so he's got the doors open so he can, you know, run the heater to keep some of the heat off and you know, pull some of the heat from the motor and not boil himself alive inside the car. So he's got a door open. He's, you know, he's just way back there trying to speed up and slow it down a little bit to let some airflow through the, uh, through the radiator. It was just, you know, again, heat was just absolutely ridiculous out there. So anyhow, we pull up to Atlanta Motor Speedway. Uh, we hit the property at 615. It was, uh, they'd already start taking signs and stuff down. It, it was just like, holy shit, these guys are not playing around. Six o'clock, they are done. So, uh, you know, we're hauling ass through there trying to find the entrance to where everything was set up. Because like I said, they started taking all the signs down. So finally figure out, we see some cars coming out. I was like, all right, we're going to go the opposite direction of those guys. So we duck over and we get in there. We're, we finally find our way to the infield area. We get over there. We get parked up and uh, we, <laughs> we see random people walking around. I'm like, we just got here. Where do we check in at? <laughs> They're like, check in. It's over. I'm like, the hell it is. <laughs> so, so I end up running into a couple of uh, 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 staff folks. And uh, they're like, it's that building way over there. I was like, holy hell. Um, we had just spent six hours on the side of the road and better part of six hours in a vehicle. And uh, my legs were not happy. My legs were really tired. My knees are actually bruised from working on the uh, uh, the spindle on Steve. Um, but my legs are not happy to now all of a sudden I'm having to walk really, really fast. You know, I'm, I'm a fat guy. I don't run. Um <laughs> I always say, I've only got to run if there's a bear chasing me. And hopefully there's two of us, because then I've only got to outrun the other guy. <laughs> so uh, so we're you know we're hot-footing it over to this freaking building. We roll in, and all the Power Tour folks are in there celebrating. They're having you know some uh, some adult beverages, and uh, they're celebrating the end of a successful Power Tour. And I'm like, son of a! Ah! And so I see one dude, and I was just like, hey, where can I get my long hauler plaque? And, uh, he's like, he's like, uh, I don't, I don't know. Um, let me go find somebody. And so he starts to walk off and this really nice young lady goes, she goes, are y'all guys long haulers? I was like, yes, ma'am. And she said, did y'all just get here? I was like, yeah. <laughs> so she ends up saying, just follow me. And we're like, oh, sweet. So we followed her. Um, they had already packed, they literally had already packed everything up. Um, so they had the long hauler plaques sitting on a golf cart. And, uh, uh, she's like, how many y'all need? So we got our long hauler plaques. And then, uh, then we took a big sigh, a big collective sigh of relief. And, uh, it was just like, okay, we made it. We got it done. <sighs> now we got to walk all the way back to the truck. <laughs> so, so when I say we didn't stop, uh, once we stopped for gas, I mean, we stopped for gas. It took us a half hour to get to a gas station that we needed to get to. Uh, when we we're leaving Pensacola. So we hit that gas station. We filled up. We did not stop until we got to Atlanta Motor Speedway. We didn't stop for bathroom breaks. We didn't stop for gas. We didn't stop for nothing. We just hauled ass. Everybody had to pee so bad. <laughs> so then it was like a mad dash to go find Port John's. So uh, we went and hit the Port of John's. Uh, everybody was feeling all right. We, uh, we were like, okay, that's over with. We haven't eaten today. We stopped at, uh, me and Crook stopped at Whataburger at like eight in the morning on our first, uh, our first run to uh, Home Depot. We'd stopped at a Whataburger and picked up some chicken biscuits, honey butter chicken biscuits. You're damn right. <laughs> so we picked those up and took those to all the guys and let everybody, you know, eat some breakfast because we hadn't eaten that morning. That's all we had had all day. So everybody was starving. We said, screw it. Let's go find some place to eat. Uh, so we head out. It's like, all right, let's go back to the interstate. We headed back to the interstate. We found a Waffle House. We stopped in there and, uh, hats off to that guy. Cause it was one dude working. Um, and he only had the counter open. We took up every seat at the counter and, uh, uh, that dude, he busted his butt. He got everybody their food, uh, you know, took our orders, did the cooking, did the serving, topping off drinks and all that. So, uh, um, I don't remember that guy's name, but, uh, he was uh, he was killing it, um, and then from there we drove home. 
So we drove home. We did make a pit stop at Bucky's. Uh, I mean, you have to, right? Uh, so we made a pit stop in Bucky's somewhere there in Georgia. I don't remember exactly where. Um, you know, you got to pick up some beaver nuggets. I mean, come on. If you, if you had never had beaver nuggets from Bucky's, you, you are missing out. They are, they are the cat's pajamas. So they are amazing. Uh, I also picked up some beef jerky and some chocolate covered peanuts and yogurt colored covered almonds and <laughs> really good road trip food. And then just, you know, random, I'm hungry, but I don't feel like eating good things right now. Uh, type food. So, uh, uh, so Bucky's, it's a must stop. We also filled up the tanks and then we drove back to my house to drop me and Jackson off and then Crook and them headed on home. So, uh, the, the total for the day of the time, from the time we had left our Airbnb to the time that me and Jackson walked in the door here at our house, uh, we had been rocking and rolling for almost 19 hours. Um, now granted, Jackson got to take naps because, you know, he sleeps in the truck. <laughs> if you know somebody with carpalepsy, I mean, the, the, I ain't never in my life seen somebody sleep so much in a vehicle. But my son, that boy can sleep in a vehicle. He don't care if it's 200 degrees out, sun's beating him up in the face. He's taking a damn nap. So, uh, uh, so yeah, it's, it ended up being where I was really the, the only one that was constantly awake in the, uh, in the Yukon. And of course, Crook was constantly awake in the Camaro and he had it, he had it pretty rough cause he didn't have air conditioning. I mean, you know, I, I was getting spoiled on Friday. I had air conditioning in the Yukon, but, uh, yeah, all in all really good trip. Uh, unfortunately did not end the way that I liked. Um, but, uh, fortunately I made a new friend, um, uh, Joe, super cool guy. I can't say it enough, man. Joe came in, uh, he came in in a tight spot and I, I just, God, I can't, I can't tell you how much I appreciate it. So anyways, so, uh, so I'll be seeing Joe this coming up weekend. Um, I'll probably go ahead and film it. Uh, basically that's going to blow up my, my, my whole weekend, my whole week. Um, I'm not going to really, I'm not really going to be out here in the shop working, uh, this coming up week. Cause I've got to get, you know, work stuff done. Um, and I really honestly, I don't want to pull the blazer out and get cracking on stuff on that just yet because we've got Southeastern truck nationals coming up. Um, so I doubt I'm going to make my way out here into the shop this week. I may, I don't know. It might happen. It might not. But, uh, um, worst case I'll be filming, you know, our ride down to, uh, uh, McDavid, Florida to pick up Steve and I ride back, you know, and maybe, uh, uh, maybe some other things. I don't know. We'll figure it out. We'll play it by ear for that. So, uh, so anyways, power tour 2022. Um, it was hot. It was still a good time. Uh, like I said, met some amazing folks, met some really cool folks. Um, you know, talked with a lot of really cool folks. Uh, saw tons and tons of amazing vehicles. Um, either on the road or in the parking lots or just, I mean, it, it's so many cool rides out there. The hot rod community is really a good community of folks. It really is. There's, uh, there's a lot there's a lot of really good folks out there. So, uh, uh, so anyways, uh, if y'all guys ever get a chance to do hot rod power tour, um, do it. Uh, it really, it's, it's fun. Even if you don't do the long hauler side of it. I mean, even if you just show up for a day at one of the stops, there was a lot of people that did that. Now, if you're, if you're going to stop in for a single day pro tip for me would be don't do it on the first stop. That first stop, is chaos at best um mainly because you've got all the long haulers all the multi-dayers all the single dayers you've got uh, uh all the gold and the platinum folks everybody's got to get in this one line and go register and uh i mean i've seen pictures i don't know if i don't think i took a picture of the line uh that was in memphis but let me say i stood in line for three and a half hours and only about half an hour of that was actually indoors because once you got inside, you still had to snake, I don't know, it was like five or six loops um, to where you could actually start going to, to go do your registration. So, um, but yeah, if you, if you ever get the opportunity to do a power tour, do it. It's awesome. Uh, even if it's just sitting on the side of the road and watching them all come down, find out what the route is. If it's coming near your town, find out what the route is, get out there, set up a pop-up tent, have a big ass thing of, uh, uh, water, some Gatorade, 
sit back, relax, and watch all the cool things, you know, cool cars and trucks ride by because uh, it's uh, it's pretty awesome. So anyways, folks, I do appreciate y'all guys watching. Um, next time I do Power Tour, which, yeah, there will be a next time, um, hopefully I'll have air conditioning because, damn. <laughs> But uh, hopefully next time uh, it won't be quite as chaotic because I'll know a little bit better about what to expect. Um, and then uh, that way maybe I can do daily uploads on, uh, on the video so I don't have to wait and do them all at one time and just do one big old recap. Uh, plus also I'll you know, kind of remember to actually record stuff. Um, so, <laughs> so anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, I really, I can't tell you how much I appreciate it. Um, if you, uh, haven't liked the video, go ahead and hit that like button. Um, if you haven't subscribed, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. Uh, both of those things help with the algorithm, help to build the channel. Um, uh, if you got any questions, comments, concerns, or anything like that, drop it down there in the comments. I usually respond to those things usually within the hour. Um, if I'm really busy or something, it might be later that night, but typically I answer them same day. So, uh, <clears throat> so anyways, I do appreciate it guys. Um, and I guess I will see y'all guys next week. And just remember, it ain't got to be perfect. Just good enough. We'll holler at y'all later.